Enid Buzz E-Talk is filmed weekly at 580 Coffee House at 122 East Randolph and out at Oakwood Mall. Stop by every day from 11 to 1 for 50 cents off your first drink. 580 Coffee House, downtown in Oakwood Mall. Welcome to Enid Buzz E-Talk, the weekly talk show where we buzz about community events, uh, hot topics, and we speak to special guests. What's going on, Todd? Uh, I'm trying to stay warm. I know. It is cold out there. Very Do you cold. remember a winter within the last couple of years that the ice and snow has lasted this no, long? it's all this, uh, what do they call it, global warming? Well, polar vortex. Yeah. New, uh, new keyword there, polar vortex. That's like so. a drink game. Every time you hear the, the, the word polar vortex, you take a shot. Well, anyway, but it will be over soon. Uh, the weather will be changing, I think, mid-40s by the middle of the week yep. and mid to high 50s by the end of the week. So break out the shorts in your hacky sack and get ready for that. Sweet. Sweet. Well, what do we got going on today? Today we are going to be talking to Dr. David Van Hooser about Pegasus. Answered his own question. What's he going to talk about, do you know? Uh, that Pegasus stuff everyone's talking about. He's going to give us an update on that. Tonight is the city council meeting. He'll give us some information about that. And Mon Monday night. Monday night. Yeah. Could be tonight. We don't know what night. Today our special guest is Dr. David Van Hooser, Commissioner of Ward 6 here in Enid. And uh, we'd like to welcome Dr. Van Hooser to E-Talk. Welcome. Thank you, Curtis. Thank you. Thank Appreciate you. it. Today we're going to ask you a few questions about Pegasus. There's a lot okay. of controversy going on, we know, and I'd like to just get past that since, since that's already over with. But um, some of the things that we hear on social media are that things have changed or people can no longer do their shows. Can you just kind of give us an update of, of what's going on with Pegasus today and how the operation is being handled and all that? Certainly. Um, you know, as you know, we passed the... Um, dividing the contract out from Pegasus Correct. so that it's no longer there. So the city on February 1st took over the three channels that consist of Pegasus basically, uh, 11, 12, and 19. And so what's happened since the first of the month basically is the public hasn't seen any difference. The three channels are still on. They still have exactly the same programming that they did. Um, the people can bring the religious programming down to the uh, same office where they did before. So as far as things are functioning on a day-to-day -day basis, nothing has changed. Great. Now what if, now some people that were putting together like let's say weekly or monthly shows, anybody that was using the studio, what, what's the situation with the studio right now? Now honestly I don't know the answer to that because I'm not sure where the studio is. As far as I know, nothing physical has moved, but I think ever since the move occurred out of the Crest building into the temporary space, at the nonprofit center. I don't think they've had a studio, but I honestly don't know the answer to that, Curtis. I'm okay. not sure. But they certainly can bring any of the programs that they prepare on their own in, but I'm not sure we have the actual equipment. Okay. We'll have to find that one out. Okay, we'll, we'll check in on that. And then there was two employees that were with Pegasus. Have those two employees been hired by the city now? I believe they have. I know that Mr. Benson has spoken with both of them, and they've both been offered jobs, and as far as I know, they both accepted those positions. Okay, and then um, other than what this advisory board that we'll talk about in a minute comes up with, do you foresee Pegasus going away anytime soon or are, is it still going to be a viable thing for cable television and Enid? I think part of the confusion comes in exactly what you said. Pegasus itself is the nonprofit corporation. It's not the TV channels. The channels are the three channels and technically the correct words is PEG, Public, Educational and Governmental television. That's what this is. Pegasus was just the organization that many, many years ago was selected to deal with the three channels. So whether Pegasus itself as a nonprofit really has no purpose at this point. They don't have a contract with the city, they don't have employees, they don't have a channel, but they do have a board of directors. So the board of directors is going to have to decide what they want to do with that entity. But as far as Pegasus goes, technically, yes, it's already gone. But what Pegasus to the public represented is the three television channels, and those are still there, and they're going to stay there. Okay. So, talking about part of the uh, part of your uh, commission that you're setting up to deal with, is it kind of what the best thing to do, or is it, if, if it's needed, kind of like the whole thing? You're just looking at the whole thing. 
what I see the advice, the Citizens Advisory Board that we're going to select tonight, and by the way, we have 10, uh, 10 or 11 now fabulous candidates. It's going to be really hard just to pick seven. But when we pick those people, then it, basically the book is wide open. I'm going to be appointed by the mayor, I believe, to be the, the commissioner on that group. But I, my role is going to be kind of just to keep things moving. But we want those seven people to tell us what the city of Enid wants, what's the by far the best thing we could do with those three television channels. Mm -hmm. It's not a matter of what are we going to do with Pegasus. It's a matter of what do we do with the television channels that belong to the city of Enid. And so that's the challenge, and it can be a wide range of things that could happen. So it could be, yeah, I, you're looking at the different options, and it could be that the city either keeps control the way it is, or that you find another group that would take care of that. Is that right. kind of the... And, and then what we're talking about there is the management. Yeah, that's what... The, yeah. the decision about the direction that it goes, the this this board, or the high use the word board, this uh, Citizens Advisory right. Board is going to tell the commission what they think the best ideas are. Then the commission will pick the direction. And yeah. who actually runs that? If it makes sense for the city of Enid to keep running it, in a sense, mm -hmm. and be the managers of those three channels, then fine, if that's what the board suggests. If they say, we need another group like Pegasus, the nonprofit, or even Pegasus, the nonprofit, I suppose, if they said, look, that's the way we need to go, if the commission went along with that, we yeah. could go that direction. So it's really an open slate. It's a wide open board. And it's really early. It's kind of the problem I see anyway, because it's hard to say anything. I, I, I've got lots of questions and lots of ideas, but really the advisory board and, and also uh, another idea, I don't know if you're also looking into, and I know it's wide open, but uh, looking into getting a uh, consulting or somebody from someplace else that knows about this. You know, is more of a professional. About well, we will get some information. Um, Bryce Kennedy, who was the one who really the the brainchild behind the public access television way back in in the 80s, uh, he sent me some information on a couple of cities where he's dealt with mm -hmm. that before. Oh. For instance, Perry. Um, they used to have a separate board that ran their television access, and now the city runs it, mm -hmm. and it works fine. Okay. And they call it Public Information Network, I believe. But I've heard so many great ideas from people. Uh, Curtis, you've had some ideas and things that, you know, we, we could take the three channels, and, and just as an example, this is not what we're going to do. This is just an example of what could do. We could take one channel and make it the educational channel. Let's let the school board have it. Sounds, basically, sounds like a good idea. And let the school board run um, programs. Instead of a snow day, maybe they put the classes on television on that channel, or they can use it for ball games or whatever we want to on, the, on an educational side. Well, then we take one channel and let's make it the P, the public, in the PEG group. And that would be the channel where all the uh, religious programming could be put on, uh, or whatever programs people want. It doesn't have to be religious programming. It could be something that a high school kid wants to put on there. And then you take the third channel and make it the governmental channel, the G in the PEG, and use it for economic development. Uh, have it come on in all the hotel rooms when, the, you know, every city has their channel that comes up that you mm -hmm. have to watch when yeah. you first turn it yeah. on. Yeah. Well, maybe that's the way we want to go. So, again, that's just an idea yeah. that I've heard people say, but that leaves the possibilities are almost unending in terms of what can be done with it. So, it's pretty exciting, and we'll see what the board comes up with. The, the names that are on the list to pick from tonight have some tremendous experience with media, social outlets. Uh, yeah. In full disclosure, I, I have thrown my hat in the ring. Absolutely. So I, I hope you get it. Well, thanks. I could, <laughs> could be on there. Ty, did you? No, I, I haven't thrown. I'm it's so, you're too busy. You have too much going on. Yeah, it's that. And I just, I don't know. I, helping the process or not, sometimes uh, too many ideas can, you know, I'm just kind yeah. of more. We've got some I great people, and I think there's going to be yeah. some really good ideas. I think there's plenty of good people on the docket that I'd be throwing great. myself yep. in. Now, me. originally, when, when I first learned about the board, it was kind of like um, a 90-day deal. So there's, there's this 90-day, is there still like a 90-day deadline that the city wants something done before the next budget meeting? Or what is, has that kind of gone away, or is that still a deadline for something? No, I th what, it's kind of an ongoing process, as you said, but what I, what I want to see happen is I want this board initially to give us something right off the bat. I'd like to see us maybe meet weekly. I hate to say that to the people that are going to be on the board. Meet weekly for a defined period of time, a couple of hours over the next 60 days or so to come up with a real plan. Uh -huh. Because we need to tell the city, we need to tell the commissioners at budget time, which occurs this July, what direction we want to go. And the community. I mean, everybody. And the community needs yeah. to know. Exactly. I mean, they're running it fine. As I said, 
said, I don't think anybody's noticed any difference. Steve Kime is doing fine with the mechanics of being sure that the three channels stay on television. But at the end of 90 days, then we hopefully will have a clear direction, and we may need to, we'll need to provide funding. What if the ideas that come out are so fantastic we want to spend two hundred fifty or three hundred thousand dollars on it? Well, we need to know that by July because we've got to set the budget. Yeah. Uh, so there, so there is kind of a short term um, kind of run at the beginning, and then I, I hope that the board members then will just want to go ahead and stay. And the way the ordinance is set up, the the positions rotate. I think the shortest is a year, and there's a couple of people that rotate out at two years, and a couple more that rotate out at three, so that nobody gets stuck with a really long term on that. Well, you want that to be kind of. Really we want it fresh and new, exactly. Yeah. No, no, everybody gets stagnant after a while, so yeah. there is a short term uh, okay. yeah. push to get this done, uh, at least some initial ideas back to the commission to decide within 90 days. Okay, great. Well, it sounds like you guys have it under control, and we will find out tonight. Um, the city council meeting has been moved to tonight at 6.30. It was canceled from last week due to the snow, so you can see the city council meeting on Pegasus like normal. Uh, Channel 11, is that on Suddenlink? I believe that's correct. Okay, and uh, so tonight the commission will be, you will actually be voting on the board tonight, so by the end of the meeting tonight we will know who's on the board. Correct? That's correct. We're going to do two things tonight that relate to Pegasus. The first is is to approve the creation of the advisory board. We have to do that as a formality. And then the second step then, once that's approved, which I'm confident it will be, is to pick the people. And so they, the people will know tonight. We'll right. pick the seven by this evening. Okay, well, uh, at the last meeting, they had the art advisory board where they each uh, candidate got up and spoke. Are you going to do that tonight, or are you just going to choose from the things that were already sent in, the bios? We will, all the people who submitted applications will be considered. Um, it's certainly better if they come and, and give a one minute speech so that everybody can see their face. I mean, I know most of the people who have applied, but not necessarily all the commissioners know the people. So it's a good idea if you weren't planning to come tonight and you've got your name in the hat to please show up. But it's not a requirement. Okay. Uh, it can be done just from the application. So we'll just vote this evening based on the list of people and the bios that we have that were included with the agenda. And we should be able to sort that out tonight. Okay, great. Well, that's the update on Pegasus. It sounds like everything is running normal, and we will find out at the city commission meeting tonight who is on the new advisory panel. And we thank you, Dr. Van Huser, for being here. Appreciate and it. Thanks for will, having me. We will be back in a minute. You ever been in that situation? What Billy Bob needs is a bucket, a bucket of cords. One way to manage your cords is to use a five gallon bucket. Uh, and that was just a little short clip from the quick tips from your home show. And your home show is one of those shows that is on enitbuzz.tv. We uh, try to upload a new episode every week or so. We don't want to, you guys have, how many episodes do you have filmed already? Nine, I think, nine or ten. Great, so uh, continue to watch enitbuzz.tv for those shows and also get our free mobile app we are up to about 2,500 downloads, and we are building the business directory on that. So uh, be sure to get the mobile app at iTunes and Google Play. It is free. Uh, be sure to visit the website, enabuzz.com, the other website, enabuzz.tv, for all of your information. Mm -hmm. And if you would like to advertise, oh, contact yeah. us at buzz at enabuzz.com. If you'd like to leave comments, Contact us at buzz at enabuzz.com or leave us messages on the comment section of Facebook where we talk about Enabuzz TV and eTalk and all that. So we want to hear feedback from you. We want to know who's out there watching. So be sure and contact us any way you can. Yeah, even if it's bad feedback, we, we don't mind. Critique us. We're, we're tough. So anyway, uh, I think that's about it. We're going to wrap up the second episode of eTalk and... Uh, we will keep you abreast of what's going on in town, and we'll just keep you buzzing. Bye.